All right, Evil Dead fans, I'm going over on how to make a top. Uh, I'm not going into any kind of like specific details on how I make it. This is just to help you guys out, whether you're making a raised top or a flat top. Now, what you wanna do before you make your top, so your body's already cut like this, you wanna measure out an inch at a time. So you wanna measure across, an inch apart, across, across, all the way to the front to make sure that if there's a 16th of an inch or an eighth of an inch off, you need to fix that because it can ruin your top. It can actually start to warp it and bend it and it'll be all cattywampus and you're gonna be mad. Especially on the raised tops. The flat tops, you can have some over overlapping. It's not a big deal on that one. It just depends on how it comes down in the front. You don't want it like hanging like way over here or anything like that. If you're doing a raised top, you want it, your top, if you're doing, doing the same method that I do, you want it to fit, fit inside like that. So you know where your sides need to be attached to the top. Now with this one, I actually have to shave down a little bit from here to here where the black marker is. Now with this one, it's gonna be a little bit different from what I usually do on trimming this down. I wanna keep this body line here, completely there. And the way I'm gonna do that is you see right here, it's kind of rounded. I'm actually gonna grind that down because an Ash versus Evil Dead top comes all the way down to this body line. Now a flat top, flat top Evil Dead flat top and somewhat of the raised top on Evil Dead 2, I've noticed it comes down, boom, right to that body line. There is a gap there. So it's not so much of a big worry doing a flat top. It's a lot easier. So but that's just a little quick lesson. You want everything to be uniform. Uh, if you say, well, I'm going to slope it in. I've seen that. I'm not a fan. <clears throat> and you're going to look at that and go, ah, I could have done a better job. You might have waves in it. Not a, not a prime thing to do. Um, another thing, if you're doing a flat top. Now, Mr. Pollock, uh, Chris Pollock, he informed me with a bunch of photos. He's trying to make the most cinematic, accurate flat top that's ever been built. And I am very impressed with his work. Uh, the grill on the flat top is really funky. Uh, it's The mold they did looks like crap. It's really kind of wavy, really chunky, and kind of, you know... It's really, really messed up, and he's really trying to perfect that. But one detail that a lot of people forget and never even notice is it's got a really super fat base. Basically, the base would be from here to here, and then you'd have the grill out, and it's way more rounded than any of the other grills. Uh, Army of Darkness is somewhat rounded like it. Ash vs. Evil Dead is not. Ash vs. Evil Dead's more of a thinner look. Uh, you can buy thinner grills, you can buy thick grills, but if you're trying to get the proper flat top look that's somewhat accurate, that's very close, what I would suggest to do is get a grill like this. Now this one, I molded, and I wanna thank Mr. Frankenvolt for sending me a piece to mold for myself because he I don't think he's in the market uh, uh, selling any more grills. So he's like, hey, I'm gonna send you one to mold and you can do what you want. I'm like, cool, but I won't sell him because he doesn't want me to. Uh, or he hasn't said anything about it, but I, I just won't for respect for him. But what I would do with this, I would get one of these, mold one of these, and actually cake on a huge base of Milliput underneath it. Because Milliput sticks to anything, it hardens up like a rock, more like actual plastic. Sand it round with it, and then round off these edges because the Ash vs. Evil Dead's more of a flatter look versus a rounded look. Uh, Mr. Pollock sent me a bunch of photos of it, and I was like, wow. And he's really, really trying hard to get that grill right and molding it to look funky right off the bat instead of having to put those imperfections in uh, with sandpaper or anything like that. But that's one thing you need to remember if you're trying to get it very, very accurate doing a flat top. Your base is almost this this wide here. And then your grill is out and it's really super rounded. And if you wanna get super detailed with it, you're gonna to have to try to warp it, you know, sand indents in it and everything. Uh, 
it's more mostly that is mostly just a preference so I'm gonna give you guys some more details especially trying to make the top handle here in just a right, second guys, one more thing before I get into the top handle details when you're doing a flat top chainsaw the reason why that top comes to this body line and comes across and there's a little gap here where that top edge comes from here across it's because the top is from all the way to this edge all the way across over here so you don't have to grind this down at all see this is right now is cut out cut out for just an ash receivable dead chainsaw so your top if you're doing a flat top and you can reference this with evil dead chainsaws because i've seen it with his that top comes all the way across over here and will cover this body line all the way across over here all the way down all you'll see is your little block here sticking out now some people some of these models they have shorter blocks but you won't see this extended piece right here it'll cover it and i suggest just to overlap because if you take this all the way off you're gonna break the body apart and it won't have any kind of structural uh, integrity and when you do a flat top you're gonna want to go over it it's not completely flat you don't want to sink in your top under the body because that looks I've seen that I'm not a fan of that it's not accurate it will actually be over top like this let me get it right here over top and then kind of slope down there will be somewhat of a gap in here but with Evil Dead Chainsaws what Rob did is he filled it in with grit and gunk and it looks super cool uh, when I actually do my own and do the lightweight one I'll show you guys how to do that and fill it in with grit and to avoid any kind of other gaps. You just don't want to sink that flat top into the cuts. And on a flat top, you can actually leave a lot more of the top, basically most of it, because you're going to overlap over it. So uh, with that, let me go into the uh, top, or the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the top. All right, one of the toughest pieces to make and I really hate making these other than making the tops is the top wooden handle that is it has the uh, metal sandwich in between now the best method on making one and cutting one what you want to have is a one inch dowel you can pick up at any hardware store or craft shop now on a bandsaw you want to use a bandsaw that has a nice sharp blade with a guide and most of them have guides so you can turn them around to where you need them to so you can get a nice straight cut. Now, I didn't want to buy a bandsaw. So I bought what this is called a 10 inch miter saw. I call them a chop saw. Now with this one inch dowel, I only actually get seven inches of cut. If I had a thicker block of wood in there, it would be 10 inches. But since it's only one inch, that's all I get is seven inches. Now my Ash versus Evil Dead Handles are only six and a half inches long. Now you have to remember, depending on how long that metal top handle is, that is going to be your length for your top wooden handle. Because depending on how you make it, if you make it more straight, it could be longer. If you make it more angled, it could be shorter. Now, if you're going with this chop saw method, just remember if you uh, are only going to use this to make top handles and just simple things. You want to just go to a pawn shop and buy one. I got this one from a pawn shop for 50 bucks, and that's all I use it for is just making top handles. And when you do purchase or purchase one, make sure your cutting distance is more than you need. Um, you don't have to get it super big, but more than you need for your top handle because if you don't, you buy a smaller one, it's going to be way too short, and you just bought a piece of crap. And I've tried it with smaller ones. It doesn't work very well. So... That's a little word of advice right there. And, and also, if you do this method, uh, I do suggest to use a jig of some sort. A jig will help guide it and hold it in place. So what I do is I put some two by fours on both sides and then put my dowel in between and sandwich it in and make sure it's straight. And then just whomp, one good cut, it's done. Then I turn the piece of wood around from from this direction to this direction knowing my width across chop that then i got my two sides i need now when it comes to narrowing down the edges 
angling them. I don't chop them because I'm worried about splintering, so I don't do that. What I do is I measure about a half inch over, over to the edge, all the way across. Just pretend this is split right now. And the same with all four sides. And then I wrap it in black electrical tape, stick it in a vise, and I use harsh sandpaper, then softer sandpaper, you know, really harsh grip, grit sandpaper to a nice light grit sandpaper um, to get those angles. I like to do that because, like I said, I don't like splintering. I get worried about splintering, so that that is a good way to avoid that. And it seriously only takes me 10 minutes to do. And when you're using sandpaper, I do suggest to use to just go to a hardware store and buy one that's meant for like a uh, like a die not a die grinder, but just like a grinder or a sander, like a power sander, because it has a nice hard back to keep it flat. Um, another method is to put it on a wooden block to keep it nice and straight, so you don't actually round out your angle. Because if you do that, you round out the angle with the sandpaper, it's gonna look like crap and you're gonna hate it and you're gonna have to start over. So you wanna keep, want keep it nice and flat, but it, seriously only takes me 10 minutes to do that way. And you will actually save yourself a lot of headache if you have some splintering on the end, because if you angle cut it, you may get some splintering past here and you'll have to sand that down or try to fill it in or just say, screw it and start over. So the, like I said, the best method is a bandsaw. The second best method, in my opinion, is a chop saw or a miter saw. Like I said, make sure that your distance is correct, that you need from here to here. Do not buy a super small one. And if all you're doing is making handles with it or just small things, go to a pawn shop and get one. Like I got this for 50 bucks. I have done them by hand before. I hated that, so that's why I bought this. And uh, I hope this helped you guys out on making your handles. It's, it's a pain in the butt. I've been asked how I make mine and that's how I do it. Uh, if you do it by hand, a lot of times it will turn out uneven and you're going to have to cut out and waste a lot of wood that you don't want to waste in the first place. So, and I do suggest to buy a bigger, bigger, or I mean longer wooden dowel than you actually need. Don't buy one of these little bitty, you know, screwy ones. You want something longer. So when, if you're doing this method and you stick it in the jig, you know, with the two by fours on the side, sandwiching it in. You want a little more on the end, especially if you screw up, you have more wood you can work with. So that's just another thing to help you guys out with your chainsaws, whether it's a flat top or an Ash vs. Evil Dead or Army of Darkness chainsaw. Hopefully that helps you guys out. And uh, I'm gonna keep on working on my top lid right now for my uh, Ash vs. Evil Dead chainsaw. And uh, you guys stay groovy, man. You guys are awesome. And I appreciate every one of you guys. And uh, I want to give a shout out to Terrorize Studios 190. This guy has, he will build Evil Dead props out of anything. And I'm super impressed with him. And uh, I'm glad he's part of this channel. And uh, yeah, cool dude. And he's going to set up a new video of his props now. And I can't wait to see him. So until next time. You guys stay groovy.